On repeated rewatches, Konosuba has cemented its place in my heart as one of my favorite anime of all time. I love everything about this show, the wild comedy, the superb animation, and especially the lovably quirky cast of mean-spirited idiots who drive its plot forward. But for as much as I love this stupid show, there's one thing I don't understand about the reaction that fans, myself included, have had towards it. The girls of Konosuba, especially main girls Megumin, Aqua, and Darkness, have become some of the most prominent waifus in recent memory. Aqua was the top seed and second place finisher in this year's Reddit Best Girl Contest, while Megumin and Darkness were both in the top 20 seeds and only lost to quarter finalists. There's half a dozen figurines of each of these girls, not to mention many of the minor characters, with more coming out like every other month. So what's so weird about the girls from a popular anime franchise being widely loved and getting lots of merchandise? Well, the thing about Konosuba's best girls is that they're kind of the worst. And I don't mean that in the subjective your waifu is trash kind of way that the term gets bandied about online. I mean that these characters are intentionally written to be as unrepentantly awful as humanly possible. Kazuma and company are self-centered capital J jerks, and while that's a large part of what makes them so funny, it also also makes them more or less objectively some of the worst potential romantic partners in anime. Aqua in particular has even been canonically identified as worst girl by Kazuma in the Konosuba OVA. Moreover, the main girls of Konosuba are specifically written as subversions of standard waifu tropes designed to poke holes in common female character archetypes. Initially, Aqua appears to be your bog standard haughty tsundere, but within minutes of arriving in the other world, World, it becomes clear that she's really just a whiny, entitled, stupid, like, really stupid asshole. Megumin evokes the appeal of a cute little sister character, but spend a few minutes with her and you'll quickly realize that, in line with her youthful cuteness, she's a stubborn, childish brat. She's impulsive and ill-tempered, not to mention so caught up in her Chunibyo delusions that she actively drags down her allies in combat. On top of that, she mercilessly bullies her only other friend, Yunyun, for basically no reason, and she's probably the least awful out of the trio. Darkness is the stereotypical older sister sister, graceful, composed, and self-sacrificing to a fault, but why would somebody in such a cynical world as Konosuba's hurt themselves so frequently for the sake of others? In Darkness's case, it's because her selfless acts of heroism are driven by very selfish masochism. She gets such an extreme sexual thrill out of humiliation and pain that she classed as a paladin just so that she could be closer to the monsters who might molest her, even though she can't swing a sword to save her life. Now, to some people that might not sound like such a bad thing, and I'm not here to kink shame anyone, but Darkness's masochism borders on insane. Her life goal is to be captured and tortured by the Demon King, and her ideal husband is an abusive alcoholic who would force her into prostitution. She has zero self-control or sense of boundaries, making everyone around her profoundly uncomfortable and unsafe, as she frequently puts her friends in actual danger thanks to her proclivities. All three of these girls are written to comedically suggest that IRL, your average person perfect anime wife would almost certainly be some brand of ruin your life crazy. While Wiz, Eris, and Yunyun, the less tropey girls who don't gravitate as closely around the equally awful Kazuma, tend to come off as a lot more sane, likable, and genuinely kind. Yet, if you look at their popularity, it's no contest. The fandoms behind Konosuba's deranged main girls dwarf those of every supporting character except for Eris, who's big in Japan, but not so much in the West, and pats her chest. People love these girls who have been explicitly designed to be hateable. And looking at that R anime poll, they seem to love the worst one of them the most. So why is that? Part of it is almost certainly the so-called mere exposure effect. People tend to develop a preference or affinity for things simply because they're familiar with them. Konosuba is a really good anime that's been watched to death and memed through like three levels of undeath, and naturally that means that every anime fan and their mom has been exposed to a lot of each of these girls, and their popularity does line up roughly with the amount of screen time they get. But if that was all there was to it, then Rem wouldn't 
wouldn't be more popular than everyone else in ReZero, and Toru would have won the best girl contest in a landslide because she's in every shot of My Hero Academia. So we've got to look beyond people's affinity for the show itself. The simplest possible explanation is definitely their looks. If you look past their obnoxious personalities, the girls of Konosuba are undeniably cute as heck, and a lot more animated and expressive than your average anime girl. And sure, a lot of their expressions aren't what you'd call conventionally beautiful, but I'll be darned if they don't make me smile pretty hard and stick in my memory, especially the many distressed faces of Aqua and the classic Smugumin. On top of that, their designs are really strong. Aqua's fancy hairdo and fine clothes exude an elegance that clashes beautifully with her uncouth attitude, the ribbons and wing-like shoulder guards on Darkness's armor match her outward persona of angelic purity while her long, tied-up hair suggests she's trying to restrain herself, and Megumin's youthful enthusiasm and Chunibyo delusions are reflected in her asymmetrical patchwork robes and rough haircut. Each one is drawn almost entirely with a single primary color, along with an accent tone corresponding to their personality. Aqua's outfit is blue with pure white trim befitting of a goddess, Megumin's hat and cloak are demonic black, and Darkness has pure white armor that lets her less than pure true nature peek through the cracks. You'll note that whenever she's stripped down to her black bodysuit, she tends to get even hornier than usual. All of the girls, and Kazuma, have yellow trim on their outfits as well that signifies that they're all part of the same group. These great designs naturally make for great merchandise, especially figurines. Megumin's flowing cape and Aqua's flowing hair lend themselves really well to dynamic figurine poses, and they fit together so nicely that you really want to have a full set of them. Regardless of whether or not they actually are your waifus, there's a good chance that you'll want to put them on your shelf because they just look great. But most importantly, in terms of design, and I am being 100% serious here, Aqua doesn't wear panties. Or maybe she does, and she used magic to turn them invisible so that Kazuma can't peep at them. That's a popular fan theory. But the fact that fans are theorizing about this at all should tell you that Konosuba's character designer hit gold with this decision. Not unlike the plot thread that somehow holds up Hestia's plot, this is that, but for booty lovers. Not only is this somehow a debate, but people are using figurines to push both sides of it. And the fact that some have panties while others don't only makes it more contentious. This single brilliant marketing decision has surely moved many Aqua figurines. And coming back to the mere exposure effect, if you got an Aqua or two up on your shelf, you're naturally going to be more inclined to declare your undying affection for her. Or at least say that she's pretty needed if someone asks you to pick a favorite girl from the show. But picking a waifu can't really be something so superficial, can it? Surely there's more to winning a place in our cold, dead weeb hearts than just putting a really cute girl in front of us a lot. Well, I mean, when I say it out loud, that makes a lot of sense, but uh... Stop doubting yourself, Jeff! That was supposed to be rhetorical! And in all seriousness, there is more to the primary motivator behind choosing a waifu, the ephemeral feeling of moe, than simply liking how an anime girl looks. Moe is a feeling of adoration and devotion, a desire to protect something precious. So maybe Aqua, by virtue of being the single most pathetic creature in existence, naturally inspires our protective instincts, as does Megumin in her limp post-explosion Form. Or maybe, just maybe, we do like these girls for their personalities, after all. Because as awful as they can be, they sure as hell are entertaining. The way that Aqua smugly looks down on others for their embarrassment, only to inflict it on herself ten times worse. The way that Megumin wears her emotions on her sleeve. The way that Darkness gets way too into being attacked by monsters, yet can't stand the humiliation of being called La Latina. These girls are hilarious. Their antics make me smile with much greater frequency and strength than any waifu who's more conventionally cute and sane. I find a similar appeal in the harem of abrasive, violent jerks surrounding Ranma, and Ranma in his girl form, for that matter. But it's not just comedic value that makes me love these girls. For me, the real heart of what makes them so fun and lovable is the shitty personalities themselves. Because for as annoying and crazy and downright insufferable as they are, at least they're not fake. Well, I mean, as 
as fictional characters, obviously they're the definition of fake, but so many waifus and moe characters are made less for the sake of advancing the plot or having good chemistry with the existing cast and more just to tick boxes and pander to otaku. There are so many anime girls out there who are just cute for the sake of being cute, who play into worn out tropes as a cheap way of making our Kokoros go doki doki without having anything of substance beyond that. And while it can be fun to indulge in that occasionally, it's the moe equivalent of empty calories. At a certain point, the transparent attempts to seduce us into picking best girls get exhausting. The girls of Konosuba, by trying their hardest to be unlikable, ironically end up being much more charming. There's something nice about knowing that someone is comfortable being their absolute worst around you. It breeds a level of familiarity and affection that you really don't get when people are putting on airs in a transparent attempt to impress you and be attractive. With most anime waifus, you never really get past that first date awkwardness, but Aqua, Megumin, and Darkness basically jump straight to that level of invasive familiarity where they can puke in front of us, hold a conversation on the toilet, or confidently push us into a tiny corner of our shared bed. We end up loving them in spite of, and even because of, their faults. Especially Darkness, because she is crazy DTF. And if that's not true love, I don't know what is. Or maybe it's just that they're all really cute and we're all sheep. Let me know in the comments below who your favorite Konosuba girl is and why. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to make sure that you catch every Mother's Basement video that comes out from now on. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my Mother's Basement.